Hello, this is Anna, the Pretty Shepherd, and today I am here to tell you about my favorite antique and vintage finds of 2020. Co-starring my fat, roly-poly, orange tabby cat. Okay, you won't be seeing her very much because she just likes to lay around being fat and just a little bit lazy, but you'll probably hear her purr, so enjoy! So I particularly like the transitional period between December and January because of two main reasons. Firstly, because you get to make plans and think about all sorts of exciting new projects that you may want to take on in the next year. But the second thing is looking back into the past year. And in this video, I want to share with you something that might even be considered an exercise of gratitude. I think it was back in November that I've read on Virtuous Courtesan's Instagram that she likes to keep a list of all her best antique finds and at the end of the year she will rank the 10 best finds in her blog post. And since my strong suit is a lot more chatty chatty rather than writing, I figured I would turn my list into a video. They say that time sweetens the memories and I do believe that these sort of gratitude exercises will help us think back to 2020 in a slightly more positive way. Please feel free to join me as you're watching this. So if you can think of three or at least just one vintage thing or just favorite thing that came into your possession in the past year, please leave it in the comments below so we can all rejoice and start this year in a much more positive and more grateful mindset. Okay, enough with the talking, let's just jump into the top 10 list of beautiful and exciting old things. Number 10 is actually this brooch. A tough choice. Since I did come across a small handful of vintage jewelry, which is in good enough condition for me to be able to incorporate it into everyday wear, still, this is the one I favored and worn the most relative to its age as well. It's hand-painted mother of pearl, set in silver, though it has no marking. This brooch is likely from the late 19th century or perhaps the early 1900. A good rule of thumb when dating brooches is to check if the pin in the back extends past the brooch. If it does, it's likely from before the 1920s. Number nine is actually a little bit of cheating because it's a bunch of things. It's my big folk kerchief haul. I was lucky enough to stumble across a huge box of vintage folk kerchiefs in a charity store. According to the sales lady, they've been sitting there for ages, nobody wanted them. So I came home with like 20 something new floral kerchiefs. One of them still has the USSR stamp on it so it hasn't been worn ever. Some of them have been eaten by moths, but that's perfectly fine. It happens with these old kerchiefs. They just need a little bit of tender love and care. And I will probably make a video about how I mend them and how I take care of these kerchiefs in the foreseeable future. Number eight is a W. Avery and Sons crochet travel set from the 1800s. Wow! What a find. This should actually be higher on the list considering how rare and awesome it is. But since I can't crochet for the life of me, it lost some points of practicality. As you can see, this is how it works. You open it and bam, you're fabulous and ready to crochet at any time. Number eight is a set of Romanian folk costume pieces from the general area of Bihor and Banat. So I came across this sweet, sweet, sweet old lady in a flea market in my hometown. I fell in love with the skirt first and foremost because of the pastel colors. I just felt like they were my kind of colors. And then when I saw that she also had shirts, I figured I would make a set out of it. And then she also started showing me the aprons and yeah. I try to rein myself in when it comes to buying folk costumes because there's quite a large availability of them. And um, yeah, my house is pretty small, so they wouldn't really fit in here. 
this one was love at first sight. Number six is a 1910s belt with a gloriously beautiful clasp and, as far as I can tell, true silk lame. This one is so high up on the list because its condition is still good enough for me to be able to wear it for special occasions, of course, but it's still such a beautiful item that just like scream history as you caress it and uh, it feels so wonderful in your hands. Number five is this beautiful Art Nouveau coin purse. Now this one is so special to me because daffodils are my favorite flower. I'm still looking for the right kind of silk to refurbish it with, but even in its current condition I'm sure you can see its unique beauty. This is how you're supposed to wear it, by the way, hooked into the waistband of your skirt. And yeah, it just sits there, surprisingly snugly. Number four a collection of ladies' magazines and patterns from 1905. Yes, you'd better believe it. This is actually the first ever original pattern and magazine of mine. I could hardly believe my eyes when I saw this listing. It's a set of magazines from Hungary with all sorts of articles and gorgeous pictures. Interestingly enough, I actually thought that I would be most excited about the fashion plates in it, but it turns out that I really enjoy the advertisements. Reading the way that they were worded and the things that they were selling is just such a great way to gaze into that time that this newspaper was printed in. For instance, there's an ad selling music sheets for piano based on recent folk music collections. How awesome is that? That there was a missus somewhere playing these folk music tunes adapted to piano. It just blows my mind. That's Wow, <laughs> it's getting really exciting here as we close in on the top three. But before I move on to those, I want to make some honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, I really want to showcase my most recent acquisition, which is this gorgeous belt buckle of mother of pearl and grenade stones. I'm absolutely guilty of wanting to use this for a crazy over-the-top 1830s outfit. Honorable mention number two, this skirt, which looks pretty bland and boring until you realize that it's the fabric for my Transylvanian folk costume vest, which has become a staple of my wardrobe in 2020, so I just had to mention it. And honorable mention number three is actually more of a question. I have come across quite a few more modern vintage, vintage, ish pieces such as this pretty knitwear which I wear for my everyday looks. They are by far less old and less precious than any of these items listed here today and that's also the reason why I wear them in my everyday looks and I'm super thankful to have found them so I wanted to include it in an honorable mention but my question is would you actually be interested in me listing those things as well? Perhaps seasoned with some tips of where to find these sort of stuff and how to look for flaws in them or how to haggle. Do let me know in the comments if that's your cup of tea because even though they may be less fabulous and exciting, I would love to share my tips and tricks for them if that's something that's useful to you. Okay, moving on to number three. It is a Spanish mantilla comb, which as I understand is used for a certain type of Spanish folk clothing. Okay, so this one may actually be one of the newest items on my list, likely from the 60s. And the reason why it is so high up on this list, even though it's not quite that old, is perhaps the circumstance of how I came to find it. I just randomly stumbled across it in a charity store and the salespeople had no idea of its value so I probably got it for tenth of the price Can you believe that? So as far as price to value ratio, this one might actually be my luckiest find of the year. Number two is, drum roll please, my 1910s gown. It's a gorgeous gown. I'm absolutely in love with it. If you want to see more footage of it and also me getting flustered and anxious and excited as I open it, then you can go and watch this unboxing video if you haven't seen that already. Oh dear, 
What could be more fabulous and exciting than the 1910s gown, do you ask? Number one, an Asyut shawl. Now, if you have no idea of what that is, fear not, I didn't either. When I saw this listing on a Hungarian auction site, I just knew that I stumbled across something special, but I had no idea what it was. And I've reached out to my friend Virtuous Courtesan, who is an expert in vintage textiles. She basically told me what it is, <laughs> an Askew shawl. So thank you so much, Virtuous Courtesan. By the way, she also has a totally underrated YouTube channel where she talks about and does awesome stuff with vintage fabrics. So uh, you should check that out if that's something that interests you. So it's basically a piece of cotton mesh or netting or bobbinet with very, very thin strips of metal bended and worked into it to create these beautiful geometric patterns. The textile got its name from the city where it was originally produced in, a suit. Now the thing about a suit fabric is that it feels like nothing else in the world. It's such a peculiar sensation against your skin. It's both heavy and light. At the same time, cold yet comfortable. The clothing of Tolkien's elves must have felt like this to the touch. Like it's it's just, it's borderline magical. And with that, we've reached the end of my list of top 10 best vintage and antique finds of 2020. A lot of you seem to enjoy my unboxing, so I figured maybe I can share more of my vintage and antique collection with you. But please do let me know in the comments if this is something that you would want to see more of in the future. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content, because I post new videos every week. Thanks for watching, have a great day, have a wonderful new year, and bye-bye!